Hello, this is Dan Neckar with the Pointer Student Newspaper and SPTV Student Television. And today we're lucky enough to speak with Mr. Ralph Nader, uh, four-time presidential candidate and um, consumer advocate. Uh, and we're just going to ask him a few questions about what he talked about in his presentation here at UWSP and a few things about the local politics uh, in the city and in the state and as well as uh, a few national issues. So, Mr. Nader, thank you for your time. You're welcome. Uh, the first thing I wanted to ask you about is the new book, Only the Super Rich Can Save Us. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? It's a work of fiction, but it could happen. And uh, I thought it's best to portray what is possible in this country by uh, taking 17 real-life older rich Americans like Warren Buffett, Ted Turner, Yoko Ono, Warren uh, William Gates Sr., and they all get together under the leadership of Buffett in this fictional story in January uh, 2006 in Maui uh, Hotel in Maui, uh, Hawaii. And they plan to pour billions of dollars behind community efforts to recover America and to take on the, the big uh, corporate barons and their political allies in Washington and get living wage, full health insurance, electoral reform. They create a People's Chamber of Commerce, a clean elections party. They buy an entire mass media, radio and TV, because they can afford it. So uh, I wanted to ask the question, what would happen if these kinds of well-connected, retired multi-billionaires with an enlightened background uh, put 15 billion with a B behind the people, what would happen? And I trace it out, and, and most of it is very realistic. It could happen with that kind of resource base and public backing. Okay. Um, you're known for your consumer advocacy with the auto industry, uh, with meat and agriculture, and many other things. Uh, are you still pursuing that, and are there any current topics in that field that you're going after right now? Yes, we almost got a stronger uh, consumer, uh, auto safety bill Yes, last year. It was blocked by one senator holding a hold, you know, Senator Coburn of uh, Oklahoma. Ninety-nine senators have signed off. It shows you the tyranny of these Senate rules that give one senator the ability to block 99 senators. So we're going to try again. This is after the Toyota acceleration problem to give the Department of Transportation updated enforcement powers, penalty powers, and to go into the whole electronic uh, revolution that's affecting automobiles. I mean, you know, an automobile's been all called a computer on wheels. Mm -hmm. So that, that and we, we've got a lot of other things going. We want to put all government contracts with corporations online so that people know what, what's going on, uh, how much waste, how much delay, whether they're needed. We're getting good uh, bipartisan support on that. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of sustainability action on this campus and other campuses across the nation. What kind of things have you seen that are pro to true progress, and what kind of things still have a long way to go in that sense of college campuses? Well, we've seen co some campuses really uh, be in the vanguard with uh, water, fuel, recycling, conservation, right across the board, right down to their chemistry labs. Other universities, uh, especially the larger ones, haven't stepped up as much. So they're wasting a lot of money, which is probably reflected in some of the tuition, because they could save a lot of electricity, air conditioning, water resources, recycling, and so on. So the first thing is to get where you go to work every day uh, shaped up. Uh, because if you learn sustainability at the university or college level, you're going to have a leg up when you graduate. You're going to know what you're doing. You're not going to say, what? What's that? You know, what's renewable energy? What, oil, gas, can we replace it? Maybe we can't. Of course we can. With efficiency and renewable energy, year by year, uh, reducing the role of oil, gas, coal, and nuclear. Okay. Uh, Wisconsin, right now the political climate is pretty active and uh, a little chaotic. Um, in terms of what sort of bills they're trying to pass, limiting collective bargaining, and the action that you've seen on a grassroots level from people in the state, uh, what is your take on that and what kind of uh, impact do you think all of this is going to have over legislation? Well, it's going to reach the Wisconsin Supreme Court, but it looks like it's a 5-4 Republican majority, although you never can tell for sure. Uh, but it's going to create a political backlash. I think the next election, a lot of the Reagan Democrats, blue-collar workers who flirted with the Republicans for years on social issues, now their pocketbook is being hit like a thunderbolt. 
their right to collective bargaining, the right to defend themselves. So I think the Democrats are going to do a lot better in 2012 here. Maybe Feingold will run for governor against uh, Walker. And most interesting is the extent to which Obama is going to put his support behind people here because his political operatives in the White House a few weeks ago uh, vetoed an invitation, uh, vetoed Joe Biden, his vice president, from accepting an invitation from the State Federation of Labor to address that huge rally in Madison. Can you imagine? All secret, you know. I mean, here, here are the workers. I mean, you see how cowardly the White House is? That's not finished yet. That's going to be a bigger story. Why did Joe Biden, who wanted to go, who calls himself a union guy, that's his words, get vetoed by the White House to go to a mass rally representing workers' interests? in Madison, Wisconsin. Okay. Uh, on a national level, um, during his campaign, Obama made numerous promises and claims that he was going to shut down Guantanamo Bay and the camps that are there. Um, and that obviously hasn't happened. Uh, they're still talking about whether they're going to be military trials or um, civil trials. Mm -hmm. So what has held him back and uh, what do you expect to happen with Guantanamo Bay? Well, he did promise to close it down. Now it's going to stay open indefinitely. It's a huge drain, uh, and it's a scar on our constitutional government because th these people should be properly charged, given their due process rights, and tried in federal courts. Uh, other people who have been accused of similar things have been tried in federal court. A military tribunal allows tainted evidence. It, it is not. It's stacked against the defendant, and uh, there's no reason to use it. Uh, but he is, and he's afraid of the Republicans. He's, uh, he's more afraid of the Republicans than he is of the Democrats who elected him. Whenever that happens, you have an administration that goes more to the right, more to the corporate, because they know that the uh, liberals and progressives who elect him have nowhere to go. And so uh, by having nowhere to go, he turns his back on them. And uh, as long as liberals and progressives signal that, uh, they will lose any bargaining power to pull Obama to, in their direction, while the corporatists and the right-wingers are pulling in the opposite direction. Okay, you said um, a few things about prosecuting George W. Bush and members of the administration um, as criminals because of the uh, their violations with the writ of habeas corpus and other constitutional things. Um, what kind of progress do you think that will have? Do you think that's something we'll ever see, or is that uh, a dream that, that will never be fulfilled? Well, first of all, presidents, vice presidents should never be above the law. And the fact that they're now retired doesn't mean that the criminal law doesn't apply to them. People forget that during the Nixon-Watergate scandal, uh, it was only F Gerald Ford's pardoning of Nixon that saved him from a Justice Department prosecution after he left office and went back to California. And Watergate obstruction of justice can't compare with criminal wars of aggression that have killed and injured millions of people, U.S. soldiers, drained trillions of dollars that could be used to rebuild America over in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I think we have some interesting situation. We have uh, Republicans like a former deputy attorney general under Reagan, Bruce Fine. We have the uh, Fox judge, Napolitano. Uh, they believe in criminal prosecution said it right on the record uh, of Bush and Cheney. Uh, obviously, uh, Holder, the Attorney General, doesn't want to do it. Obama doesn't want to do it. But we have to keep pushing. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you a few more things about college students, since we are a student newspaper. Um, what simple things can students do to promote government action towards sustainability on local and national stages? Well, first of all, they can weigh in on their members of Congress so that when good bills are before them, they vote for these bills, like uh, electricity standards for renewability by 2025, say 25%. That really encourages more efficiency and wind power and other forms of solar energy. The students don't know their own power. They got numbers, they got votes, they can turn out the votes, they got leg power, they got brain power, they got their own newspapers, their own radio stations, they have their own communication system. Most citizens don't, you know, they don't have, they don't have radio stations. And let it be said that Facebook and Twitter can be used for more than just fashion uh, purchases and parties. It can also be used to organize. Exactly. Right now it's being trivialized with gossip and it's awful what's happening. Students 
have the biggest stake in the future of the country. They got next 50, 60, 70 years. Are they going to have a standard of living even as good as their parents? The polls show most people your age don't believe it. They see their jobs, white collar and blue collar, being outsourced overseas. They see declining household incomes. They see rising unemployment, underemployment. They get a job that's often a temp job. Uh, real wages uh, have not, and it's still not reached uh, 1973, adjusted for inflation. Economy's doubled. Who's gotten all the gains? The rich, the top 5%, especially the top 1%. So that's why the, the students should have their own uh, civic skill courses, civic engagement courses. They study the community as part of practical civics, learning how to use the Free Information Act, put the coalitions together. They should have Congress uh, monitoring groups as part of their political science. They have huge power over Congress. Every semester there's a Congress monitor course 101 or 102. And they study in detail the daily activities, the voting records. They disseminate the voting records to people in the district. They, they call these senators for accountability sessions, representatives. They have no idea how easy it is to really develop student power. But as you say, you know, you can't trivialize things and expect to have the uh, older people respect you for power, the adults respect you for power. Okay, the last thing I want to ask you about, um, obviously you've gotten a lot of attention from Democrats in 2000 saying that you cost them the election, and your response was Al Gore lost the election for Al Gore, yes. not you lost the election. You actually even said Al, you blame Al Gore for losing the election for you. <laughs> I heard you say that on press yeah, conference. See, that's my way of saying we all have an equal right to run. Uh, third parties are not second-class citizens. We all have an equal right to run, which means we're all trying to get votes from one another. So either we're all spoilers or none of us are spoilers. That's the point. Having said that, Gore doesn't blame the Green Party. He, it was, he thinks it was stolen from him in Florida, all the way from Tallahassee. The, the blockage of the total state recount by the Supreme Court, 5-4, Republicans voting. And he also won the popular vote. What other country you win the popular vote and you come in second? So what I wanted to ask about that is, what um, did you receive any sort of threats, or I'm sure you had plenty of tenacity directed to you, did you receive any kind of threats or any sort of violence or like from not just Democratic uh, politicians but from voters? No, mostly a shunning and exile. For example, I, I was not allowed to testify uh, most of the time in Congress. They shut us out. Uh, or I would lose lectures at universities because the universities were lecture bureau run by hardcore Democrats. Or uh, I couldn't get publishers for some of my books. I got all this actual feedback, you know. So it's, it, it's really amazing because what did I do? I, I didn't do the corruption in Tallahassee. I didn't finagle the votes. <laughs> you know, I, I was just running. So actually, if, the, if there wasn't an electoral college, uh, Gore would have been president because you won the popular vote, and nobody would have ever ha had anything critical to say about what we'd done. They would have said, oh, good, you, you made them more progressive, let's hope for the next round you even get more votes on the Green Party. So it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a virus uh, where uh, there's a political bigotry directed toward anyone who dares to challenge the two-party di dictatorship and dares to challenge the ballot access barriers in state after state as we did with many lawsuits. Okay. Well, Mr. Nader, I want to thank you for your time. Yeah. And I want to thank you for not just giving me the time and the opportunity, but for talking to SBTV, The Pointer, and you were even on 90FM today. So thank you for uh, giving us that time. And I want to say, historically, some of the best ideas came from third parties first and foremost. Anti-slavery, women's right to vote, worker rights, standards, fair standards farmer rights, the populist progressive movement. They never won a national election, but they pushed the two parties in the right direction. I uh, just want to remind everyone that you can find more news from student events on the Pointer's website, pointeronline.uwsp.edu. And where can we look to find more information about Nader? Well, sign up to get my weekly column automatically free of charge on, on your email. Uh, just uh, log into uh, nader.org and sign up. You get the column every week, and you'll start some more and more discussion. Okay. Well, thank you again, Mr. Nader. Thank you very much. You're welcome.